Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com and in this video I want to look at editing automation information. And broadly speaking, every DAW should be able to do the things I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, but how they do it in your particular DAW is one that you'll have to work out for yourself. What I'm going to look at is editing some automation information that's been written into Cubase. And for want of a better uh, track to look at, we're looking at the volume lane here for this particular track. Now this is a fairly arbitrary amount of information, but there's a number of ways you can edit it uh, to try and make sense of it. I've deliberately messed it up so that we can have a look at the different ways. The first thing you can do with editing automation data is to edit the individual nodes. As you can see, when I move the mouse onto the automation lane, the individual automation points become evident. If I move the mouse away, we end up with a simple straight line. So we can go in and we can pick one of those automation points. As you can see, immediately we get the information about where it is and its value. Now we can edit that right up here. We can just click and drag down. or you can simply double click, enter a value, whack, off it goes. The automation value has jumped up to there. You can also edit the start point and you can move them around and it will jump along the line quite randomly to wherever you want to put it. You can also simply click on the node and drag it. In this particular case as we're back to having the snap to the bar, it will only jump to a bar point. If I use the quantize as the snap, I can now move it with much finer increments around the bar. So we can do that. We can also simply hit the delete key to get rid of it. And you can in fact identify multiple points. So if I just highlight those two, and we can hit the delete key and delete them. Cubase helpfully selects the next automation point along so we can work with that. You can also edit automation points as a group. If I select all of the automation points, you'll see that a little box has appeared and depending on where I hover my mouse depends on what facilities Cubase offers me in terms of those automation points. Now what it won't do is it won't alter the start and finish points of the automation. But what you can do is adjust those automation points relative to each other and the automation lane outside of the selection. So I'll have a quick look at what you can do. Most simple and most useful is to scale vertically. So you can click and drag down and that moves the automation points and because I've selected these automation points and there are no other automation points on this lane it's moving the whole thing. Right, just to prove the point if I then just select those in the middle and scale those vertically as you can see the ones outside are unaffected. You can also scale like that so that I can then leave those points unaffected and move the points in betwixt. Now that's grabbing the dot in the middle. If I grab outside of that it allows me to move the points vertically so they stay relatively together. The scaling doesn't have the same effect. What you can also do is tilt the automation. I'm going to reselect the lot for this. It then, as you move it, depresses the automation towards this end of the box, or likewise I can then pull it back up. I can also tilt, so I'll just scale that all back up, tilt it down again, you'll see that this edge is unaffected, whereas this side is being pushed down. If I just do some undo's to take us back to where we were before, 
It also says if I hold Alt, it will compress the data. See, it compresses them. Here, we have the scale around the absolute center of the selection. So what I can do here is again alter the relative values of the outside relative to the center. And I can also stretch the automation data within the selection so that depending on where I grab depends on how the data gets compressed or stretched as I pull it out. As you can see, it, this is a question of where you click it makes all the difference. So having done that, we can then simply highlight those, delete them, and we're now ending up with something of a more smooth parabola to uh, the original rather strange heartbeat shaped form that we had. So over the last couple of videos we've looked at recording automation data by moving the controls as the song sweeps through. We've looked at writing automation data with the song static and now we've seen that we can edit automation data whether we've written it or recorded it so that we get it just right. Next time I'm going to have a look at how you can record automation data without actually using automation and the advantages and disadvantages of doing that. But in the meantime I hope this has helped and that really brings us to the end of the section looking at the basics of automation. Uh, so until next time you take care of yourselves.